by World War II, Miami Beach had become America's playground. Well, these are the 90-day wonders here, the guys taking basic training on Miami Beach. Beginning in February 1942, that's just two months after Pearl Harbor, American Armed Forces were mobilizing. The country was faced with thousands of men and women enlisting and really no place to put them. So where do you go? To a place with a lot of hotels and good weather? Exactly. And by 1942, there were over 300 hotels crowded into this end of Miami Beach, enough to accommodate about 78,000 military personnel. Can you imagine what it must have been like? Lots of famous personalities trained here. Right, such as Clark Gable or even Franklin D. Roosevelt, Jr. I can't imagine. These military personnel were here until 1944 and 1945, with the last leaving at the end of the war in 1945. Now, if you just go a few blocks over to 10th and Ocean, you can still see the memorial that was built to honor the servicemen and women of World War II. And when the war ended, the almost 80,000 soldiers who had trained here remembered how beautiful it was. They brought their families back, not only for vacation, but to live here. Miami Beach was about to experience yet another boom. We've just walked down the boardwalk with this magnificent view of the hotels and the beach. This boardwalk actually extends from 21st Street all the way up north to 46th Street. It was built a couple decades ago essentially to create a promenade for people and an exercise path for people. In fact, let me just show you on the map where we're at. We're right here at the eastern edge of Arthur Godfrey Road or 41st Street and the boardwalk. And in a moment, we want to head north a couple blocks up to the Fountain Blue and Eden Rock Hotels. When you look at the sheer number of hotels that are off the boardwalk, you have to imagine what it must have been like in the late 40s, early 50s when these buildings were all coming up and how exciting that time was. There were 300 hotels here by 1947 and they were building them at that point at a rate double the rate of 1925, which was the peak year of the great real estate boom. But 1947 also marked a period of a couple of hurricanes and a law was passed here banning those offensive, racially discriminating signs on the beach. So Paul, what other things were going on in the late 1940s? Several factors were coming together at that time to radically transform Miami Beach. For one thing, many veterans who had served here in World War II got sand in their shoes, in the words of Damon Runyon, and came back here to live on a permanent basis. Also, there was a public relations whiz, Hank Meyer, who was advertising Miami Beach to the world. He would have beautiful bathing beauties clad in bathing suits in the middle of winter, and these pictures would go through the northern newspapers and magazines. In fact, Life magazine ran a 12-page spread, color spread, on Miami Beach uh, in the late 1940s. Other things going on, of course, included air conditioning. By the end of the 1940s, almost all the hotels here had embraced air conditioning, so this meant that Miami Beach was no longer just a winter resort, but now it was a year-round resort. People were coming throughout the whole year. This essentially set the stage for a boom in the early 1950s, a developmental boom like we had never seen before on the beach. Well, let's take a walk up the boardwalk to 44th Street and see two of the hotels that really were a part of Miami Beach's golden era. Let's go ahead and do it. We're in the lobby of the Eden Rock Hotel adjacent to the Fountain Blue, and this lobby really says it all. Just look at this. It's really magnificent, it really is. And, you know, it really grew out of the collaboration of two guys from two different neighborhoods in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, one was Ben Novak, a hotel owner, and the other was Morris Lappin, as a hotel designer. And they had a stormy relationship, but they collaborated on several buildings in the area, and out of that came buildings like this magnificent Eden Rock Hotel. By the late 1940s, the Russian-born architect was beginning to make a name for himself. Morris Lapidus would eventually design the Sans Souci and this hotel, the Eden Rock. Lapidus used characteristics like floating staircases, bean poles, cheese holes, and signature curves. I've heard some people call it Miami Beach French. <laughs> or Miami Modern. In 1952, Lapidus designed a 565-room Fountain Blue Hotel, which was named after a palace in Europe. He built it on the site of Harvey Firestone's old estate. It was so famous it didn't even have a sign for the first 20 years of its existence. By the early 1960s, there were over 450 hotels on Miami Beach. You had some big names performing at the famous Laurent showroom. Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Jerry Lewis, even Liberace. 
which really brings up a great point. These big hotels in the 1950s were self-contained. You as a guest here could get a meal, see a floor show, get a haircut, buy a necktie, whatever you needed, which was really convenient for both you as well as the hotel owners since it's very profitable. So as a tourist, this was one of the best times to be on Miami Beach. From the 1950s to the mid-60s was the heyday of Miami Beach. Nothing was better. Now in terms of architecture, we've moved on from the Art Deco style and the earlier era. Where are we now? We really are out of that style completely. We've moved into the Miami Modern or MIMO style and then a little later on into the contemporary style of architecture. According to one authority on the style, MIMO was the evolution of tropical Art Deco after World War II. The contemporary style of architecture as found on Miami Beach includes soaring circular towers with plenty of tinted glass, balconies and overhangs, and usually at the top levels, a glass encased spa. Many of these kinds of buildings are under construction today on Miami Beach. It's really kind of a fun look. So Paul, tell me one of your favorite stories from the 50s and 60s era. Well, actually, two come to mind when I think about that era here. One involved Jerry Lewis, who made his debut as a director in 1960 at the Fountain Blue, and out of it came one of his greatest comedy hits. The Bellboy. You got it. And the second involves Novak and Lapidus in another feud. It seems that Lapidus received the commission to design the Eden Rock Hotel. Novak became so angry, he designed and built a new wing in the Fountain Blue. He later was accused of building it intentionally to cast a shadow over the pool area of the Eden Rock so the guests couldn't get any sun there. And what about you? Well, I think one of my favorite stories would have to be going with my grandmother to the Fountain Blue Pool. And you know, it's such a big lagoon, and as a small child climbing up that stair and sliding down the slide, it was just such a thrill. We've done so much, so what's next? We're going to head back down to South Beach where this journey began and look at South Beach over the last 20 years. I can't wait.